Hi, everyone, and welcome to Chair Yoga. Uh, let's begin this morning um, with the uh, reading for the day. Sort of will be a good starting point to give us some focus in terms of, um, you know, the spiritual side of things, the emotional side of things. So we can come gently into uh, some intention in that regard. And then I've got a great practice I think you'll enjoy today as well. Why don't you use your block um, to support the back? I want you to bring your block between your shoulder blades and scoot on back into the chair so that you can feel it supporting your back and creates kind of a chest opener. It's, it's a way to do a supported back bend, but I have kind of twisted that a little bit in my own understanding is that a back bend is a hard opener. You know, that's, that's the result of that. So come back into the chair, get your, your, your block in its lengthwise position in its lengthwise position and just put it right into the back of the chair where you can uh, lean into it. And here's how I want you to lean into it. I want you to push your feet to the floor. So rather than trying to bring your shoulders back and move your upper body, find the block back there and push your feet to the floor and let that guide you back into it. And then bring your upper arms close to your side body. Maybe you pull them into the backrest a little bit. So it's, it's a pose. We're coming into this right off the bat, right out of the gate here into a supported back bend. But I think it's, uh, it's an easily accessed and it's, it's got a lot of um, support to it so that I don't think it's gonna be too much of a leap. So close your eyes if you will, uh, feel that supported back bend and really notice too how it opens the heart as you start to uh, notice your breath, feeling the breath coming in and out and using of course this as a transition. So, you know, you're not talking anymore, you're uh, focused on your body, you're aware of how you're holding yourself, feeling the breath in your body Maybe you deepen the breath. Maybe you do a cleansing breath so that you can really, you know, start fresh. And my, my book that I've relied on so often these days, I've got several that I read almost every day. Uh, this is one, and it's just got a beautiful, very related to the yoga philosophy that I thought you could uh, appreciate. I surely did. <clears throat> So eyes are closed, feeling your heart opening. Here's the reading. Your body, mind, and soul are one. The body, mind, spirit, and emotions are more than just connected. They are one. To nurture the body is to nurture the mind, spirit, and emotions. To nurture the spirit is to nurture the body, mind, and emotions. And so it goes, a continuous connection, a continuing whole. Do you feel fragmented? Have you disowned a part of yourself? Invite it back. Maybe you focus too heavily on one part and neglected the others. You can be a world-class athlete and still not be in touch with your soul. You can be skilled at dealing with any emotion that comes along and yet not see the delicate connection between that emotion and your conscious thoughts and beliefs. Or you may be so focused on tending to the needs of your spirit and mind that you neglect your body, resent it, and think of it as a limitation. Tend to each aspect of the whole. Do things that nurture your spirit. Perhaps spend time in prayer and meditation or time with nature. Work on what you believe. Clarify the thoughts that run through your head. Nurture yourself emotionally. Let yourself heal from the feelings of the past and do what you need to stay current and clear. Listen to your body and give it what it needs. It's not separate and apart. It's not a nuisance. It's the form your spirit has created to experience the gift of life. Find that place of balance in nurturing all parts of you. 
then life will begin to be magical and you'll see what you believe. Your feelings won't be a bother. They'll fuel your life. They'll be the passion that adds color and zest to your life. Your body will lead you instinctively into what you want and away from what you dislike. And the longer you travel the journey to the heart, the more you'll discover and trust your soul. Start by becoming connected. If you love yourself and keep walking your path, soon you'll see how connected you are. I'm joining you in the chair now, leaning back into that block so I can feel that experience of heart opening along with you. Feel your feet to the floor, give a little push. Feel your legs engaging and how that supports your whole body. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale it out of the mouth. Ah. Inhale. Cleansing breath out. And let's get that block now and bring it to the thighs. This means you're going to have to kind of make your way forward so you're not into the backrest. So you're coming forward enough that you still feel very supported with your pelvis into the chair seat, but you're relying on your core strength for the rest of your body to support you in this position. So let's feel our feet to the floor. Make that body scan, if you will, bringing yourself into the experience of your body, checking out how your ankles feel. See if you can get some awareness of the shins and calves of your legs. We can squeeze the block and we can feel the inner thighs and we can feel the strength of our thighs and our quads, those thick muscles, the long, strong muscles of the legs. Let's pull the belly in so you peel. You feel your belly button pulling in and notice how that stabilizes your low back. Lift and lengthen so you feel the breath not only in this vertical manner of lifting up and you know, growing the length of the spine, but also as a broadening. So you feel the expansion of your rib cage with your breath. Just as an exercise of, of really knowing that your breath functions the way it does because you can feel it is, I want you to take your hand to the low belly and then just breathe in any way that, you know, your way of breathing, but I want you to feel it in your hand. So if you can try to emphasize that how you're breathing is felt in your hand. And it's not, it doesn't have to be giant. It's not like this huge experience of this low belly. It's just like, I feel it in my hand. I can feel the low belly's movement of breath. Yep. There it is. I can feel it in my hand. Now let's see about the diaphragm. So that means you're going to have your hands kind of right at the base of your rib cage, just holding on there. Now just breathe, but you're going to try to feel that breath with your hands, that's the, where the diaphragm is located. Right, it's unmistakable, right? And just noticing, so you're really feeling this functionality of this three-part breath. That's how I, it's often taught, you know, is that there's this low belly version um, that's facilitating the breath. There's this diaphragmatic experience of the breath, very important. It's important to um, encourage that. So we strengthen the, the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a muscle. And finally, the breath makes its way to the collarbone. One hand will do it. Just bring your fingertips to the collarbone and continue breathing and see if, we're, you know, if you're like me, there it is. It's not giant. It's not a giant experience, but it's definitely made its way there. Let's just trust now that that's how our breath functions and that we're participating in that. So maybe you have a particular 
um, favorite. Maybe, you know, that diaphragmatic breathing, for example, that felt very expansive and very strong and you're all in with that. So you just kind of make that be your more particular experience of your breath just for yourself. A sun salutation, I'm gonna introduce that today. A sun salutation is a sequence of movements that has primarily the shape of uh, opening or lifting to the sun or bowing as in honoring the sun. So, so saluting the sun is lifting and opening to the sun and then bowing or folding as a, as a honoring to, of that. And so it's done as a vinyasa, which is, inhale, which is connecting your breath to movement. Here's what I have always used, and you're gonna be so familiar with it, I've never called it a sun salutation, but here's what I have used in that regard, and that looks like this. Inhale with me now, palms come together overhead. Exhale, bow to your heart. Inhale back up and exhale all the way down. So using that very familiar, let's do it now. I'm gonna um, take you through it as the vinyasa flow that it is but we're gonna add a few more things. We're gonna fold forward. So let's lose the block for now so we don't find that to be uh, cumbersome. So I just tucked it under the chair. And here we go, sun salutation. Inhale up, exhale, bow at the heart. Inhale up, take a swan dive to forward fold all the way down. Inhale up, hands are at the thighs, we're in a half lift, exhale, fold again. Reverse swan dive as you inhale all the way up and exhale to the heart. Let's do that one more time. Just take a moment now. And we'll do our second sun salutation. So I'll, I'll weave that into our class today a little bit more. Um, and if I just do a portion of it where we do the, the movements that you're very familiar with, then you'll, you'll kind of know, just have some recognition of as we tie our chair yoga experience, our chair yoga practice into more traditional verbiage of yoga practices all across the world. And sun salutation is certainly right in there with that. Inhale up, exhale, bow. Inhale up. Swan dive as you exhale to a fold. Inhale up, half lift, hands are at the thighs. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, big reverse swan dive carries you up. Exhale here at the heart. Beautiful. Arms are alongside the chair's frame now. Let's move into our cow and cat. Let's just start by extending those arms back and letting the chest come forward. Press your feet to the floor. If you kind of like your block in this, if you want to have your block between your thighs, by all means, use it. It's a nice way to make sure your legs are properly engaged and you're not letting them open up. You want to keep them in alignment. So if using the block has been a good tool for that, by all means, just grab it and use it. So we're starting with just patterning the body, feeling the C-shape, not the C-shape, but the extension that arch of the back body as our arms kind of stay nice and close to the chair's frame. So we're breathing both in and out, patterning the body, seeing how far back we can let our arms reach, how that we notice that in our body and how that feels. And on your next exhale, just either bring your hands to your lap or let your arms float out in front of you as you come into the C-shaped curve of the cat. Tucking your chin in towards your throat, feeling the roundness through your shoulders, the roundness of the back body. Your shoulders should be right over your hips. So if you've brought yourself forward, if as you're rounding your back, you brought yourself forward, make that adjustment. You want to have your shoulder carriage right over your hips. All right, let's do this as vinyasa. So as we inhale, we're in our extended spine, the cow pose, and as we exhale, we're rounding into the C-shaped curve. Try to exaggerate the movement, just pay attention to how your neck is feeling. So how you're carrying your head through this is, a, is up to you, how much movement you're trying to encourage or, or not. 
Remember to finish the breath, inhaling and exhaling, and you're finishing the breath. You wanna make sure it's a full breath in and out. Next time you're in the rounded position of the cat, I want you to just slide your hands down your legs and lay down into your thighs into a forward fold. Surrender the weight of your head. Don't look up. Don't try to look at the screen. You don't need any guidance of the screen right now. Just fold forward into your legs. And if you need to open your feet wider because that's more comfortable in your body when you're folding, remember you want to make sure you open your knees the same way you're opening up your feet. Knees and feet line up. So don't just open one and not the other. Keep the knees and the feet lined up. Now let's get some belly breathing going. I want you to really feel now we've got ourselves in a fold. We've got our belly resting into our legs. So that's a fold by definition. And we wanna create some more belly breathing so that we can get the benefit of the that the internal organs need. And that is the increase of circulation, blood supply, oxygen into the internal organs with those big belly breaths. Surrendering the weight of your head, looking down and underneath yourself. I always encourage you to keep your eyes open in these folds. It helps you keep your bearings. One hand at a time can jump to the thighs and we're gonna bring ourselves up halfway, squeeze your elbows in towards your waistline and press your feet to the floor. So I'm in a half lift, I'm moving, you don't need to move. I'm just illustrating this from a side view. So press your feet to the floor, elbows squeezing in. Let's see if we can extend the arms away from the body now, straight arms, palms facing each other. And then notice where you're comfortable with that. Maybe you've got to come up a little bit because the low back started to holler at you. So you're noticing where you can feel comfortable with extending your arms out in front of you. Maybe one arm can do it. And that gives you access to that. We need strong legs though. Keep pushing your feet to the floor. Let's go back to a fold. Reach forward, reach forward. Lay yourself back into your fold. Look down and underneath yourself. Big belly breath. While you're down here, move your head as if to say yes, and then as if to say no. Loosening up, releasing the tension in the neck. Let's jump our hands back to our thighs, squeeze your elbows in. Let's come back up to a half lift. Tuck that chin in towards your throat. And now instead of extending your arms straight out, could you extend them away from you like wings? So palms are facing down and then reach back. Press your feet to the floor, feel the strength of your legs. Head, neck and spine are in alignment. Now use the strength of your legs, but also the arms to lift you all the way up. Inhale with me here, exhale, bow to the heart. Inhale up. Exhale, swan dive to a forward fold. Hands come to thighs as we inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse that swan dive all the way up. Exhale, bow. Let's come back to now a mountain pose with arms right alongside the frame of the chair. Just find your breath, catch up. I want you to create the bend in the elbow where one arm's in front and one arm's behind. Press that back hand into the back body so you get this little pull back of the shoulder. It's a nice alignment. The front arm doesn't have a lot to do, just the bent elbow right there. And then turn your head toward that front arm. So whatever arm's in front, that's the direction of your turn. Come back to neutral and then switch those arms and set it up, push the back hand in and turn toward the front arm. Finding your breath now, I want you to just keep alternating that. We don't need to do it together. You're just doing this practice for yourself that you're able to change gears, switch the position of your arms, 
Switch the, the way you're turning your head. Stay with it. Let's meet with those elbows up and the hands reaching down. So we've got a bend in the elbow, palms facing behind us really. And then I just want you to move the arms up and down. So the arms are just going fingertips up, fingertips down, but keeping those upper arms kind of in a stationary position at shoulder height. And we'll meet with the fingertips down. Now let's go back to where we started with the elbow bend and the hand behind. And now this time we're gonna use this for a twist. And guess what? We're no longer looking toward the arm that's in front. You're looking the other way. Push the back of the hand in there and let's get our, our front hand to grab hold of the side of our leg to pull us into a twist this way. Feet to the floor, really feel the strength of your legs. Let's get it into the strength of the belly so you feel support in your low back. If you're feeling like your low back, that lumbar curve is like really straining, make sure you're balanced in your pelvis. Make sure your shoulders are right above your sit bones. That's gonna help support that low back curve. We're not trying to get rid of the curve. We're trying to support it. Unwind your head and come back to that goofy position with your hands down. <clears throat> this is kind of a scarecrow if we were looking for a name. And then just switch to the other side. But again, we're not gonna look toward the front arm. We're gonna go the opposite. We're gonna turn the other way, let our head turn the other way and use that front hand and arm to kind of hold you there. I'm gonna hold on to my thigh and it gives me some leverage to twist to this other side. Balance through the pelvis. Soften your mouth, relax your tongue. And unwind the head and unwind the shoulders and let's come back to neutral. And as we're here, resetting the body, let's use shoulder rolls to reset the body. Keep your arms close to you. <clears throat> and then you can really direct that shoulder roll. You know, get those shoulder blades to move. Don't worry about moving your head. That's all part of the neck, neck, head, shoulders. They're so related, you can just prep practically can't do without some kind of movement and some kind of experience here that includes the movement of the head. Let's change the direction now of your shoulder roll. Coming forward, you're spreading the shoulder blades apart this time. And I wanna go into our, our swimming kind of action so that you're taking a full movement of your arm. It's like a swimming stroke and turn your head just like you would if you were taking a breath. Full stroke, full lift and extension of the arm. Let's do one more on each side. And come back to your neutral position. We're gonna grab that block and take a little wider stance now and take it in its high length and bring it out in front of us. So extend it as far away from you or for far away from the center of that chair as you can. And yet you're still you know, connected to the chair. You haven't lifted yourself up off of that chair seat. So see how much you can extend. Again, I'm gonna give a side view just in case that's useful. You, and you're planting your feet. There's a kind of a right angle of the bend of the knees. So you're not tucking your feet too far underneath you. And then see if you can lift up the chest, lift up the chest and feel the length of your spine here. Head, neck and spine stay in alignment. Feel that in your legs, press your feet to the floor. 
We're gonna resituate the block. So lift it and move it over toward one foot. Doesn't matter which one, just move it over toward one foot. So now you've twisted a little bit. And if there's any movement, maybe that block has to come closer to you. Maybe you could reach it further away from you. Check in with your pelvis and make sure you didn't lift up on that side. You know, don't want to list. You want to keep those sit bones grounded into the chair seat. We're going to stop at center to make our way over to the other foot, other side. Breathing in and breathing out, keeping your pelvis grounded, feels balanced right to left. One more full breath here. And let's bring ourselves back to center. Let's get the right hand on that block. And you might have to kind of play with it. Where could you keep the right hand on the block? So you're dropping, you're gonna get your other hand behind your back. Remember, we're gonna use the back side of our hand. Wrap it as far behind you as you can. Turn your head so your ear is facing the hand on the block and keep your knees drawn apart. Breathe. I bet you're going to feel movement in this. You're going to feel some adjustments happening. Just go with that. Let's never give ourselves some kind of idea that these are robot movements. This is fluid. This is all happening in connection with our breath. Let's unwind from that and switch sides. Other hand comes to the block. We're going to bring the other arm back behind you. The back of the hand is reaching as far back as you can turning your head so your ear is facing your hand on the block and breathing in and out as you have strong legs, strong connection, feet to the ground. Don't let your knees collapse in. Find the fullness of your breath. Beautiful, and then let's unwind both hands on the block. Take a moment, one hand and the other to the thighs. Let's come up. Let's take a little bit closer. Let's move our feet a little bit closer, not quite such a wide stance. And we're gonna do the work of the perineum now. So again, we're folding forward. We're coming into that half lift as deep as you want it to be. We've done this enough that you might have determined what's your sweet spot in holding this position so that we can work the toning of the perineum. So inhale as you hover the floor of the pelvis right up off that chair seat, at least it feels like you are, and exhale, relaxing back down into it. You're gonna feel the strength of your legs. You're gonna feel the strength and the attunement of those inner thigh muscles, those adductor muscles helping you. Retain it as long as you can. Inhale, hold and lift and hold, and then you come back to your exhale when you need it. But don't rush it. See if you can retain the inhale and retain the lift as long as you can. Head, neck, and spine in alignment. There's no tension. Relax shoulders, relax neck. This is all about strength of legs, strength of lifting and toning that floor of the pelvis. Let's stay with it. Lift and hold now, lift and hold. No more hands on the lap. Can you extend your arms away from you? Inhale all the way up with me. Wait. Let your shoulder blades slide down the back. Your body is just gonna recover from that you know, a little bit of a fold there, an inversion, just a bit adjusting now. Join me for a sun salutation. Inhale, palms together. Exhale, bow to the heart. Inhale up. Exhale, swan dive to your forward fold. 
Inhale, half lift, hands are at the thighs. Exhale, fold again. Reverse the swan dive as you bring yourself all the way up. Exhale, heart. Beautiful. Let's tuck that block under and come to the little bit of the side of the chair. I don't know, I'm getting in a hurry here. Let's stay right where we are. Let's get into the joints. I want you to lift up your leg and start moving your ankle around. So you're moving your foot, circling it around. Make sure the standing leg, the leg you're not working on just now is firmly positioned and is well positioned. And then we'll change that movement to the knee. So that means we're just going to let that leg make a circle. Our lower leg is drawing a circle. So that's going to get some nice movement, a th very thorough movement through that knee joint. And then to change the direction of the circle. So we've got it covered. Beautiful. And then lift up, lift up, squeeze your leg and knee in towards your chest, flex that foot. And we're going to get a hold of that leg now so we can move around for that movement through the hip, of course. So we're just finding movement side to side, front and back, up, down, however you can find it. I like to hold on to the ankle and heel of my foot and then kind of depends on the day about how I'm going to hold on to the rest of my leg, what kind of gives me the best support and access. Can you straighten out the leg? Get a hold of the pinky side of your foot and extend it out so it's straightened. So let's bend and straighten. Maybe holding onto the chair is a good idea for you. You decide how to support that. Beautiful. And now we're going to come over to the side of the chair a little bit. The knee is bent. And we're going to just take a pause here. Just take a pause. Find a little lean. Just start to move into some leaning here so you can feel that movement from the hips into that bending. And then extend the leg long. Heel down, toe up. Use your hand to slide down. I'm going to suggest you take your other hand. Back of the hand is pressing into the back body, pulling the shoulder back, letting the other hand glide down the leg. Don't camp on your knee. You're going to have to jump past that. Either stay up into the thigh or go past your knee. I don't want you to put pressure under the kneecap. Turn your head so your ear is facing your knee or in that direction. Find your breath, check it in, see how it's, you know, if you have tr trouble breathing, means you have to make an adjustment. That is your body, that wise guide within you, the Guru Dave is telling you through your breath that you need to make an adjustment because you're not able to find a smooth rhythmic breath. So that's what we're looking for. Let's do one more variation of this, of this uh, side bend, and that is both arms up. Take one hand, grab the wrist, palm is facing up. So that extended arm, palm is reaching up, other hands grabbing the wrist. Try not to go past your face with your arms. Try to go over your ear if you can, but try not to go past your face like that. See if you can get it up there in such a way that it's over the head instead of the face and see about that kind of a bend. Full breath in and out. Come back up, really press that palm up to the ceiling here. And then come all the way, all the way down. Bring that leg back to center. Let's kind of get ourselves back into the middle of the chair. Any adjustments your body needs, this is where you do it. And we're gonna go through the joints here. So I'm gonna just start circling into the ankle of the other foot. Now make sure your standing leg is well positioned. You need that support of that side of your body. Check in with your breath. 
Maybe you need to stop a minute and just breathe, kind of catching up with your breath. When you're ready, we're going to extend, get our hands underneath the thigh so we can start moving now through the knee joint. It's just really that the shin bone is drawing circles. You know, that's kind of what's happening. So you're not trying to move through your foot, really. You're not doing those ankle circles. Now we're just doing this knee circle. Change the direction of that. And let's do a big fold. It's, you know, folding our leg up. So it's nice for the knee to get that final good stretch, a big fold. And then we're going to get hold of that leg in such a way that we can move through the hip. Up, down, all around. Good, let's get the pinky side of that foot and we're gonna straighten the leg and bend the knee. You can hold on to the chair, or just keep your hand on your lap, whatever you need for support. Straight leg and then a bent knee. And now let's take that bent knee over to the side. And see if you can align yourself, get that back hand to tuck back so you're starting to pull your shoulder back a little bit and helping your, your body frame this up, find out where you, how you need to hold yourself. This is a gait variation. We're gonna extend that leg now long with the heel down and the toes up. Keep your hand back there and then we're gonna use the other hand to glide down our leg. Remember, try to avoid your any pressure on your kneecap turning your head in a particular way so the ear is facing your leg. You know, you're keeping your head neutral. You're keeping your spine neck relationship just right. And then just finding the depth of this bend, this side bend. Breathe in, breathe out. And come back up yourself situated now reach up like you're just going to put the so the palm of your hand up to the ceiling let's get the other hand to grab hold of the wrist and go right over top of your ear try not to bring bring it across your face go over your ear or over some part of your head in another side bend variation here for this gait Breathe in and out. Make sure that standing leg is really pushing down to give you nice support on that side of your body. When we come back up, reach that hand up and all the way down. Let's get our legs back together. Any movement in your body your, that your body needs, any resetting, this is a good time to do it. We're going to bring ourselves to standing. So let's bring hands to the waist and just bring yourself up and back down. I want you to do a couple more of those where you're just paying attention now to the balance that it takes and the strength of your legs. And you're just relying on that focused attention to bring you right up out of that chair. Let's take a moment in our mountain pose, arms right alongside the body. Close your eyes now. We're going to soften the knees and just feel our way into this standing pose. Feel the length of our body, the whole length of our body grounded through the feet, up into the legs, strong core. Think of your core as those inner thigh muscles coming into that pelvic floor and lifting right from there into the belly button area for the kind of the little ties a little knot or a bow there. So you feel very strong and supported in your pelvic region and in your low back. Full breath in, full breath out, eyes closed. Beautiful, let's open the eyes now, flutter those eyes, get used to the light around you. Inhale with me, palms come together overhead. Exhale, bow to your heart. 
Inhale up. Exhale, take a swan dive all the way down. Hands come to the shins, lift up halfway to a flat back. Exhale all the way down to fold. Inhale, now soften the knees. Use a reverse swan dive to come all the way up. And exhale, heart. Back to our mountain. All right, let's get our chair positioned in a way that we can use the back of the chair for our support. So we're gonna access the chair back to come into some, I'm just facing that in such a way so that we can get some circles. We're coming into the knee. I want you to just lift up one leg and start making circles with it. High as you can, big a circle as you can make it and turn your body. If that gives you better access, more ability to do it by turning your head to look over there, then do it that way. Let's change the direction of the circle. So it feels like you've done a few on each direction. Now lift that leg real high, lift it up, get the foot up there, and then step it way behind you where you're crossing your leg. Now lift it up high, cross it behind you, and I want you to turn. So you're looking at that high knee and high foot, and you turn your head to look where you're putting your foot behind you. One more time. Now get your feet close enough that you can bend your knees at the same time and you can kind of feel how your knees are wrapped into each other. So take a moment, keep your hands on the chair and just find your way to getting that foot back behind you. So you've got the pinky edge of your feet matching up, right? You know the leg that you were moving? That leg, that same arm is lifting up, lift up. Take the other hand to take that wrist, just like we did a moment ago. Pull over your head. Both feet planted. And if you, not, if you need a hand on the chair, put a hand on the chair. If you need both hands on the chair, you do it in a way that gives you all the support you need. And you'll know when you've landed right in your comfort zone, when your breath smooths out. Full breath in, full breath out. Let's come out of that. Unwind with your arms. Get your hands back to the chair. Let's get our feet back where we usually have them. And we're going to come into a lunge position. So you're going to take that same leg we were moving and bring it straight back, scissoring your legs. The back heel is up. The front knee is bent. And all 10 toes are facing the chair. That's a lunge, a high lunge. We've got the heel up on the back foot. Now here's the movement, watch me for a moment. When we lift up our hands, we're gonna straighten the front leg, inhaling like that, exhaling W-shaped arms bending again into the front knee. So the back leg stays the same the whole time. The front leg goes from a straight leg to a bent knee. Inhale, straight leg, arms up. Exhale, bent elbows, bent knee. Inhale, up. Exhale, bent elbows, bent knee. Now you can always just hold the chair and take the hand movement and arm movement right out of this equation. Let's meet with the bent knee and hands are back on the chair. Palms face each other now. If you can release your hands from the chair, palms will face each other. Let's put on our mitten hands and lift up to a back bend. Pull those thumbs back. Chest is opening. We're feeling the heart opening now. Breathing in and breathing out. Hands back to the chair, step your foot forward and let's shake that out. Shake, shake, shake. Other side, standing at the chair now, we're gonna get that other knee up and start making those circles. And you're gonna turn, let yourself turn 
to look at that. So if that's easier access, let's make several circles in one direction, big high, big circles. And then we'll do some circles the other way. That's it. Now take that big high lift, big high lift, and then step it way back behind you. And you're gonna turn your head to look at the high foot and the high bent knee, and you're gonna turn to look when your foot meets the ground. Let's meet with that foot on the ground. Now take your time. You're bringing your feet close enough together that you can get your knees to bend. They're kind of wrapped in together. So your knees are bending together. They're able to do that. Take a moment to find your balance here because we're gonna release our uh, hands from the chair. The same side leg and hand matches up. We reach up, the palm of the hand reaches up. Take the other hand to grab the wrist and bend the body, bend to the side. Extended arm is coming real close to the head and the ear. Pay attention to how you're holding your head. Breathe in, breathe out. Let your breath be your teacher now. Keep your feet planted. Squeeze those thighs together. Lift up, both hands come back to the chair and let's set up for our lunge. So the back foot is stepping back with the heel up. You're on the ball of the foot and toes down, front leg bent knee. All 10 toes are facing the chair. Now we're practicing a little bit here. So we're gonna straighten and bend, straighten and bend. Now the straighten, Arms come up, exhale, bend those elbows, bend the knee. Straight arm, straight leg, a vinyasa flow. Inhale up, exhale, bend. Inhale straight up, exhale, bend. Stay with it. You wanna drishti now, you wanna be really keeping your eyes focused somewhere. Meet with the bent knee, bent elbows. Get hold of the chair now. Make sure you're very strong in your lunge. Hips are square. Reach your palms right out in front of you. Hands, palms facing each other, hands extended. Put your mitten hands on, lift up. As you pull your thumbs back, you're gonna create a heart opening. Maybe you lift your head. Find your fullness of breath in and out. In and all the way out. Shoulder blades drawing down the back body. Bring hands back to the chair. Let's step forward, get our feet to the floor now. Shake it out. Take a wide stance now. A little wide stance, hands at the hips. Let's do a circle. Let's get our hula hoop going so we can unravel some of the tension that we might have caused. We're gonna release all that in our lower back, get the hips to loosen up. Change the direction of that circle. Real exaggerated movement. And then take a moment, maybe you can just walk around to the other side of your chair. I'm gonna turn mine. Let's do a downward dog before we come into Shavasana. So hands are coming to the chair seat. We're gonna walk back, walk back. Get your hands the same distance apart as what you have your feet. And my hope for you is that you've got your hands pretty close together so that your arms are coming very close to your ear and head. Feel your toes making an imprint. Feel the whole surface of your feet making an imprint onto that floor. 
pull the chin in towards your throat so the back of the head, neck, and spine are in alignment. And use your leg strength. Remember, your body weight is being held up by your strength of your legs, your feet, your ankles, your hips. Your arms are not holding body weight, not to any significant amount at all. Try this. Instead of palms down on the chair seat, bring finger pads down. Finger pads only. Lift the palms up so you kind of have a claw-like experience with your hands. And you're going to feel that differently in your arms and shoulders. And then literally no weight is being extended into the chair. Your legs have you. Deepen into that experience of those strong legs. Palms come back down. Let's start walking toward the chair. Bend your knees, bring yourself all the way up. Find your mountain. Catch up with your breath. Last sun salutation, inhale up. Exhale, bow to your heart. Inhale up. Take a swan dive, bend your knees now and exhale all the way down. Inhale, half lift, hands are on your shins, lift up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees now. Inhale, a reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale at your heart. Beautiful. All right, let's find our way to our chair for Shavasana now. So get your second chair if you're using that. So you take the time to Get hold of another chair to give you a, a elevated legs and kind of feels like a recliner that you're in. I know that's a stretch, but you know, kind of like that. And really allow yourself to um, be supported by the chair. So we're not trying to overdo and think, you know, I stayed, I stayed, you know, 100% engaged in this strong body the whole time, like that's virtuous. Let's, let's not play games with ourselves like that. Just get back into the chair and relax. Let your body just kind of be held by the chair and soften. That's all part of this practice. Feel how your breath starts to deepen and it just adjusts itself. It just starts adjusting. Now, before you close your eyes, I'm encourage you to take your hands and come right into your neck and shoulder area and squeeze that. You put some weight into that. <clears throat> you let your arms be heavy. You just kind of hold on right there and you just let those arms be heavy and pull down. That's gonna feel nice in there. You can squeeze. Again, before eyes are closed, let's take our mitten hands and tuck those hands right into the armpit chest. So you're getting right into the armpit and just kind of squeezing a little bit. So when you're doing that, you're engaging the lymphatic system, the lymph nodes there in a very positive way, stimulating those lymph nodes so that the, any uh, thing that needs to be released from them, you know, we're just kind of encouraging that some drainage in the lymphatic system. And at the same time, it's very comforting. It feels, it feels a lot like a hug. So a little squeeze with the hands. And then last thing here, layer your hands right into the heart, right across your sternum. Remember, we're just relaxing into the chair. Now here's where the eyes can close or you can start moving your way into this very meditative place of stillness. When we are very connected to our wholeness that we, I read about at the beginning of class, when we are very much connected to that idea of wholeness, 
we can, we can uh, identify that by some characteristics. Those characteristics are flow, spaciousness, light, love, and stillness. So we're coming into the stillness now. I want you to breathe in a way that you can hear it. Go ahead and let that be a little noisier breath. You can make a sound in your throat. Keep a very softness about your face and about your mouth. See if you can soften your tongue right down to the root. And tune into your breath, not only by the experience of the breath in your body, but the sound of it as well. Tend to each aspect of the whole. Do things that nurture your spirit. Perhaps spend time in prayer and meditation or time with nature. Work on what you believe. Clarify the thoughts that run through your head. Nurture yourself emotionally. Let yourself heal from the feelings of the past and do what you need to stay current and clear. Listen to your body and give it what it needs. It's not separate and apart. It's not a nuisance. It's the form your spirit has created to experience the gift of life. Find your mind wandering, choose a mantra. Stay within and out so you can stay in tune to your breath and in tune to this present moment. In, out. Breathing in, breathing out. Feeling the wholeness, the wholeness of your body, mind, spirit, and emotion, interconnected. Introduce some movement back into your body by way of moving your fingers, moving your toes. Take a big breath in through the nose and exhale it out of your mouth. And then combining all that, introducing movement, introducing the cleansing breath. Let's start to pull away from the backrest, get feet to the floor. Go 
good. And we'll reconvene here in a place of right alignment. So the spine is long, our feet to the floor. Inhale with me, palms come together up and overhead. Exhale, bow to yourself at the heart. Inhale back up. Exhale, let's share this beautiful energy from our yoga experience with our community. And palms come together once again. We bow to ourselves, we bow to one another. Namaste, my friends. And thank you as always for joining me.